Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Man on the Mountain. Excuse the mess. We're still trying to get caught up from Thanksgiving. All the family being here and all the food that we ate. Man, we were uh, pretty gluttonous. But anyway, tonight I'm going to do the first part of that white grouse chili. Where we're doing the white chili recipe with grouse meat. So basically today, I've had those three grouse in the slow cooker all day. I'll bring this over here and show you. So I had them in with a, about a cup of Herdez green salsa, a full Anaheim pepper, salt and pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. That's what they cooked in all day. I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to shred that. I'll put the shredded grouse in a bowl, and then we're going to put that in the refrigerator overnight. And then tomorrow we're going to actually make the soup. So after I get this pulled out, I'll get it shredded and show you what that looks like when we're done shredding it. There is the grouse meat all shredded, and it is a mountain of meat. That's a big bowl. I know you can't really get a perspective from the GoPro, but that's a lot of meat off those three birds. So I'm going to put this in the fridge, uh, and then tomorrow we will make the actual chili. Looking forward to it. I, I pinched a few pieces off. I couldn't wait. I had just the meat straight off the bone, and cooking it with that Anaheim pepper in there, that was a a great idea that's the first time I've done that and I'll, I'm gonna do that anytime I'm making something with like a southwest kind of feel to it uh, it really put a good flavor on the grouse meat okay we've got our grouse in the slow cooker first ingredient we're gonna add two cans of white beans you could use northern beans I'm sure you could even use pintos or chili beans but uh, I like it better with white beans so that's gonna be the first ingredient all right Next ingredient, two four ounce cans of diced green chilies. And I'm mixing it up and doing one can of La Victoria, one can of Ortega for no apparent reason. Next, it calls for one can of chicken broth. I don't have a can of broth. I've got chicken bouillon cubes. So I'm gonna mix that. I've got uh, just over 12 ounces of water in this little cup. So I'm gonna get the bouillon cubes mixed up in here and we'll pour that in. That'll be the next thing we do. In this bowl, I have one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So we've got that all in, and we're gonna add that in now. Get that mixed around here in just a second. Next, we have eight ounces of sour cream. So we're gonna add that in along with a half of cup of heavy whipping cream. Then we're going to stir that all together and turn on the crock pot and just warm it up slowly. I'm not going to eat this until later tonight, but that's there. all the ingredients that will go into it. We've got it all mixed up and I lied. I had one more ingredient. I added four whole serrano peppers into it. Now I'm not going to, when I serve this, I'm not going to eat the peppers, but I'm going to cook it with the peppers in to try and draw some of that, that spice out of them and a little bit of that you know, peppery kind of smoky taste. So uh, we're gonna set this on low and let it cook and we'll give it a taste test this evening. Well, everybody, there is the finished product. I put just a little sprinkle of shredded cheese on the top. I'm gonna swing around and we're gonna give her a taste test. That is so good. Man, that's good. It's not quite as spicy as I thought it would be. Probably should have gone ahead and diced up those serrano peppers instead of just putting them in whole. Mm. That grouse isn't as rubbery. When I grill grouse, which is how I usually make it, or even fry it in strips, I love the taste of it, but it has a texture that's... Rubbery might not be the right word, but it's firmer than chicken. And that's probably because of all the junk they pump into chickens that you buy at the store. But this is really... This is softer, uh, probably because I slow cooked it. But it's fantastic. Man, it's really good. Again, next time I think I just will slice up the Serrano's and actually eat some of the serranos in with it just for a little more spice, a little more heat.
Well, that's good stuff. All right, well, I'm going to finish eating this so you guys don't have to watch me eat. And then uh, we'll clean everything up. We'll do the minute on the mountain and the channel shout out to wrap up the video. Thanks so much for coming along. All right, we're going to wrap this video up with the channel shout out and the minute on the mountain. I realized after I quit recording, I didn't actually give that chili a rating. I always like to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. I'd have to give it a solid 9, maybe even a 9.5. It's it's one of the best things I've made. Uh, it was it just tasted fantastic. So I gave some to a buddy of mine who lives down the road. He thought it was great too, asking for the recipe. So uh, it was really good. I'll definitely make that again in the future. Uh, the channel that I want to shout out is called Paw Paw in the Woods. A lot of hiking videos. I mean, that's primarily what he does. Beautiful area that he gets to hike in. I'll put a link in the description. He does some bushwhacking, which I can relate to. Uh, so check him out. Let him know a minute on the mountain sent you. The verse for today is, is it's more than just a single verse. It's a passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I couldn't get my phone to upload, and I don't know the whole passage by heart. So basically, Paul says, we don't grieve like those who have no hope. That when we grieve for someone who has passed away, who was a believer, we don't grieve without hope. We have hope because we know about eternity. We know that they're with the Lord and we're going to see them again. This idea of hope has been a recurring theme. I feel like that God has been putting in front of me in different verses that I've been reading or different sermons I've been listening to. And I'll confess it always gets me a little nervous when God puts a theme like that on my heart because I wonder if he's preparing me for something. But I, I even feel like going into the new year, that's just something that God really wants me to focus on is the hope that we have in Jesus. You've probably even noticed in several of my videos recently, I've, I've highlighted passages that talk about hope. And just because that's what, that's what he's revealing to me, I think that's what he wants me to focus on. So I, I don't know what that means for us. I don't know if that means things are going to get worse next year. Uh, and we're heading into an election year. got a lot of uncertainty. But all of that is secondary to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, this life is so temporary, guys. Let's live with an eternal perspective. So again, that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Take a look at that when you have some time. Thanks so much for all the support you guys give. God bless you. We'll see you the next time we're out on the mountain.